This is Hollywood. Your pal Matthias Bombell with you and a touch of laryngitis, but that's not going to stop me from sharing with you the latest news from Hollywood. Walt Disney Pictures gives us a first, a dramatic picture for adults and an introspective one at that, Saving Mr. Banks. It tells two stories, a journey into memory for the author P.L. Travers, who wrote Mary Poppins, and the desire of more than 20 years of Walt Disney to turn that story into a film to fulfill a promise he made his kids. We cut back and forth between the flashback memories of Mrs. Travers and the Disney studio of 1961, and right on arrival, she sets the tone in her typically exacting manner. Good morning, Pamela. It's so discomforting to hear a perfect stranger use my first name. Mrs. Travers, please. I, I do apologize, Mrs. Travers. I'm Don DeGrady, the, the scriptwriter. Co-scriptwriter? I shall certainly be having my say, Mr. DeGrady. DeGrady. Uh, wonderful. I welcome your input. If indeed we ever sign off on a script. Right. Um, this is the rest of your team. This is Dick and Bob Sherman, music and lyrics voice, the one and only Mrs. P.L. Travers, the creator of our beloved Mary. Poppins. Who else? Mary Poppins. Never, ever just Mary. It's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, Here we shan't be acquainted for very long. Why is that? Because these books simply do not lend themselves to chirping and prancing. No, certainly not a musical. Now, where is Mr. Disney? I should so much like to get this started and finished as briskly as is humanly possible. Perhaps someone can point me in his direction. I'd be so grateful. Thank you. Well, you see just what I mean. You caught just a glimpse there of Paul Giamatti, who plays a chauffeur of the Disney Company, assigned to Miss Travers, who is played with prickly exactitude by Miss Emma Thompson. The scenes featuring the two are amongst the best in the film. In this, the first Disney movie to have Walt Disney himself as a character, Tom Hank gives a studied performance with his voice matching closely the inflection of the clever cartoonist and theme park visionary. The almost too frequent flashbacks to Miss Travers' childhood that inspired her famous creation at times seem like an entirely different movie in tone and style from the gloss and squeaky clean feel of the Hollywood sequences, almost too sparse to look like a working studio in 1961, with no ashtrays in sight, for example, except one on Walt's desk, which makes the absence of them elsewhere all the more obvious. Colin Farrell gives a great turn as Travers' father in the flashback sequences. He's very good. I was delighted by the new musical score, separate from the famous Disney standard songs written by the Sherman brothers that are used. It's the very fine work of Thomas Newman, part of Hollywood's great composing family, in this case, working for the very first time for a live-action film with this studio and offering a subtle, elegant mood and spirit to this engaging release. I left the theater wondering, would this film appeal to the non-Disney enthralled and stand on its own as a dramatic offering for the average moviegoer. Even for the movie buff, the Disney studio sequences are not perfectly period, but the performances are very good and the sparring between Hanks and Thompson makes for good entertainment for an adult audience, a first for the Disney studio with the possible exception of Fantasia. Also seen in Saving Mr. Banks are Kathy Baker, Rachel Griffiths, and Jason Schwartzman, who is the brother of the man who photographed this John Schwartzman. It is directed by John Lee Hancock, and I think you'll enjoy it. I enjoyed it quite a bit. This is your pal, Matthias Bombell, bidding you a fond farewell. <laughs>